Hey guys, welcome back to the Craftsman's Guide. Today, we're going to be looking at palisade walls, barricades, and whatever these are. Over on my Instagram, you guys seem to really like the village entrance sort of build that I made, and that got me thinking. Whenever I think about D&D and battles and sort of thing, I go straight to village defense, fort, sieges, that sort of awesome thing. So, I'm going to show you guys how to make them today, because I think everybody needs a set of these in their arsenal. They're super easy to make. So, let's go! Alright, time to get crafting. First thing you're going to want to do is grab your chopsticks and begin breaking them into their individual sticks. Then find yourself a ruler and rule out about 10 centimeters or 4 inches from the top. Then flatten them out using a ruler and use that first one as a template for the rest. Once marked, grab yourself a knife, wait no, terrible idea, grab scissors and begin to cut into the wood about 2 thirds. Once it gets about there, you can just easily grab it and snap it. Then, you're going to want to grab your knife and begin running it down the chopstick. These leaves nice grooves that are going to show through once the paints are done. Once textured, grab your knife and begin carving the top of the chopstick like a spearhead. You can make these as long or as short as you'd like. I personally like the long look. Make sure you collect up some of these clippings. You'll need about a handful for later. Once finished collecting scraps, either eat a bunch of ice cream or go buy some popsicle sticks. Either way, make sure you open them violently. Then line up your, the top of your chopsticks. I use about 13 in line for the size that I want for the walls and then mark out with the popsicle stick just past the edge of each side. Repeat this for all the rest of the popsicle sticks and then put a nice groove down them so that you can then move on to snapping the head off. Not getting a clean snap doesn't matter because any issues are actually just characteristics. Then make sure you texture these just as you did with the chopsticks. Once textured, grab your knife and begin to bevel the edges. This adds a nice toolwork sort of edge to it and grooves on the wood. Afterwards, grab your chopsticks and begin to put them into the groups that you want for the fence. And then using a ruler, you can flat them out so they're nice and even. Then grab your popsicle stick and begin to put lines of glue down it. The more the merrier. In my case, I actually didn't put enough on the first, but we'll fix that later. And then repeat this process for each of the popsicle sticks. Make sure that when you place them down, you're putting them just below the bottom of the chopsticks and push them down so they actually stick between the grooves. If you don't, you're going to get some floppy fences that fall all the time. Here you see where my popsicle sticks didn't glue properly. That's fine, just that more glue. There's never too much glue. Once the base is done, turn it over and begin to run a line across the bottom. We're going to place a popsicle stick on the bottom, which is going to act as the flat sort of standpoint for it. And make sure you push it down so it goes on tight. We're then going to grab our trusty PVA and our matchsticks and begin to line out where we think braces of the walls will sit. Once you're happy with it, grab the PVA and begin to line them and stick them down. We're going to move on to the barricades while they dry. Grab the remaining bits of your chopsticks and mark out two four to five centimeter spaces. Then grab your scissors and begin to carve into them as we did before, just so they can snap. Once you've got your pieces, begin to carve at them like we did earlier, making that sort of pointed tip. These are gonna act as the stands for our barricade. Comet approves. We're gonna begin assembling the barricades by putting a dollop of glue about halfway down and then grabbing another piece and crossing it. These are gonna brace the actual part where the spear sit. Once you're happy with the shapes, grab yourself some of the old shrapnel from the popsicle sticks and carve it into these sort of like pointed long sections. These will work perfectly as the rack for the spears. Drop a doppler glue on each end and begin sticking the between two of the crosses. You want to make these relatively stout as you want the spears to sit at a nice angle where it could theoretically impale a PC or an NPC. As for the spears themselves, add for a bit of variability. I went for the thrown together look, so I grabbed some popsicle sticks and begin to just carve out some shapes. Then grab the hot glue and begin laying them down however you think looks good. This isn't specific how you do it, it's really up to your choice. I went for this sort of grungy look, I liked it. 
Once you're happy with the results, grab your PVA and the last barrier and begin to draw a line across. Spread it all the way across and on top of the crosses. We're going to grab those shavings from before and begin to salt bay that parmesan like it's spaghetti. Make sure you get lots on here. They look pretty good to me. Let's move to painting. Grab yourself your trusty Mod Podge, put some brown in it, and begin to coat every single surface with it. Then, grab yourself a darker brown and continue the base coat. If you missed any Mod Podge, that's fine. The difference in texture will make it look really good later on. It'll look like weathering. I'm going for the older, sort of worn down wood look, so I mixed up some yellow and some brown and tested a few pieces, and I figured it looks pretty good. So mix yourself up this sort of very thin sort of paint, drag out as much as you can and gently dry brush some of the surfaces, only where it looks like you're going to want some weathering. Once you're happy with the yellow sort of colour, grab the brown and the white and mix up a very light brown. We're going to dry brush this across all of the pieces. This is going to be the main wood texture that we're doing. Make sure you're just hitting the tops and not getting into the cracks so we still have some shadows around. Once all the pieces are dry brush, grab your silver and we're going to begin working on the barricade. You want to put just a little bit on your brush and then begin to spread it all the way across all of those little shards that we put on earlier. Try and get it to look like old weapons and daggers that sort of just been ramshackly stuck on. Any bits you miss are just going to look like rusted, so don't worry about the brown. Then grab yourself some gold. Who doesn't like some gold plated weapons, right? Same thing in the silver, just with a little less, and begin just hitting those top edges. And now we're finished. Let's take a look at what it looks like in action. This is indeed the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you learned something or liked the video, please consider leaving a like, a comment, and subscribing. I'll see you on the next adventure.